Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Topps Chrome Baseball Update Edition. Full case, 12 box break, random division break number three. No vet common ship. Uh, big thanks to this group. Thanks to the folks who bought their spots straight up and congrats to the people who won their spots that capstone break. There are the divisions right there. Let's roll it, randomize it. Four and a one, five times for names and divisions. One, two, three, Four and a one. Got Robert down to Steve. Four and a one, five times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, and a one. Fifth and final time. Good luck. We have the NL Central down to the NL East after five. All right, Robert, you got the NL Central. Devin with the AL Central. Robert with the AL West, Jose with the NL West, Joe with the AL East, and Steve with the NL East. Let's alphabetize by division. We're in a positive, although it's kind of rare. We'll, we're going to see if there's any trades in the division. I'm going to go run and grab the case. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done. So the list that you saw remains the same in this Chrome update break. And we're doing all 12 boxes, no vet commons ship. And keep your eye out for some more update in the uh, in the near future if you're into it. So that list remains the same right there. Thanks for spending a bit of your Thursday night with us. And hopefully we can get some nice stuff out of this uh, out of this update. We're searching for those purple parallels of the key rookies. Autograph possible. Not every box has an auto, though. Just letting you know. Got the uh, Lakers down by 10 on TNT to the Mavs. A lot of time left. 6.20 left in the second quarter of the first half. And I guess uh, with Carlos Correa being uh, re-signed to the Twins, just some other free agents on the periphery that are probably going to be locked up and maybe some trades here and there. But I'm just, we're just waiting for spring training at this point. But what is in full swing, the NFL offseason for a lot of teams is in full swing. And... Super wild card weekend. We got two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, I think, right? And then a Monday night game. Kind of wish it was just three and three, Saturday and Sunday. But Joe Buck and Troy Aikman getting paid a lot of money, so ESPN needs to have that, that Monday game up there, right? We're talking a little, uh, a little bit about Derek Carr for my Raiders just before we started this break. And people are like, I mean, Raiders can still trade him or they can just outright release him at a certain, if they do it, but if they do that by a certain date, they can, uh, they can avoid a major cap hit. I think there's something in the, in his contract that says that he can, uh, Five million, which is pretty negligible for for a quarterback. Where does he go? Where does he end up? Got our first Bobby Witt Jr. for the AL Central, Devin.
Gonna say a Suzuki purple. For the NL Central, Robert. I almost feel like these are gonna be numbered, but they're not. It looks like there's like a gold parallel. Also, that's Jesse Winker is numbered to 299. I think if it's a refractor and has the all-star logo on there, those are not numbered. But this one goes to the um, AL West, Robert with the AL West. So yeah, like so like that one, that Tim Anderson with the all-star game logo, not numbered. find a Julio Rodriguez in that purple. That'd be pretty nice. AL West, Robert. O'Neill Cruz apparently had some, uh, this is NL Central, had an ankle issue during winter ball, but they're saying he's going to be just fine. That's what they're saying. And that's a Bobby Wood Jr. purple. Nice. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. AL Central. Not too hot on that centering here, but... But still nice. First of many, I hope. All right, that was box one. Box two. Derek Carr. Who needs a Derek Carr? D does Miami need a Derek Carr? Who knows what Tua's future is going to be? Do the Patriots need a Derek Carr? Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, the answer, or are they going to look for someone else? I think they're looking for offensive coordinator, a proper offensive coordinator. Someone, I think, was it Tristan? Someone was mentioning Jets earlier. The Jets definitely need a quarterback, right? I, I don't think they're sold on Zach Wilson. Jets have some nice defensive players that the Raiders could use. You can get someone back like that in a trade. So OC as expected, I am quasi saying. I'm not sure what that means. You're, you're thinking Brady to Vegas, though? Let's see. I'm just going down the standings here. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know what what the what the Raven situation are. They going to re-sign Lamar Jackson? The rest of the AFC North preset on QBs. Titans maybe Colts. Colts could use a. Oh, oh I see. I, I thought you were talking about the Patriots, some like offensive coordinator, for some reason. Yeah, the Bobby Wood Jr. Unfortunately, very off center. Colts could use a QB. Do they want a Derek Carr or do they want to draft a QB? Same with the Texans. Do they want a Derek Carr, get David's brother back on the Texans, or do they want to draft a QB? Right, yeah, Devin saying Texans hired David Carr as GM. He trades for Derek. Um, Commanders could use a QB, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe Derek Carr goes to the Packers in exchange for Aaron Rodgers? Maybe. I know, the, I know the Packers are trying to get Darren Waller in the trade window and in the offseason. So maybe Derek Carr and Darren Waller, some picks for Rodgers. I don't know. I think Bear, Bears are, I think for now, happy with Justin Fields, at quarterback. Tampa Bay is going to need a QB, possibly, if... 
Maybe maybe dude, maybe Brady goes to the Raiders, or maybe he retires. I don't know. Panthers could use a QB. Saints could use a QB. Right? Are the Seahawks? Geno Smith had a nice season, but do you think the Seahawks would rather have more Geno, or would they put Derek Carr back there? Obi-Wan, what's going on? How are you? Ah, oh, the Carr family and Texans, yeah, they probably do. They'll probably never have another Carr on that team ever again, right? There's a nice Wander Franco purple. Jeremy Pena per what does three X spot break tonight only mean? Where does it where does it say that? I've been in the middle of it. That probably means we're giving away three extra spots within a certain break, whatever that break is. So it's easy. Just buy a spot, try to win extra spots. That's all. Oh, and a George Kirby. Chrome Baseball Update Series Autograph Gold Refractor Parallel George Kirby for the Mariners. AL West, Robert Flores, last spot, Mojo. You'll get all those uh, Julios as well. Uh, Wander Franco, by the way, goes to Joe Simone in the AL East. So yeah, Ray, I mean, uh, whatever that break is, that usually means we took three spots out and whoever buys spots outright will get a, win, uh, get a chance to win those extra spots. So an opportunity for a buy one, get one situation. Um, we'll see what happens in the uh, in the uh, Derek Carr saga, where he ends up, and who the Raiders end up with at quarterback. A lot of teams need quarterbacks. I don't know. Is that going to happen through a draft, through a trade? I feel like not too many QBs get traded, right? I don't know. I w I I wouldn't mind a Rogers Adams re uh, reunion though. As I am caused with saying, that was mentioning, somehow the Raiders can somehow make that trade, get Aaron Rodgers to Las Vegas. I think I'd rather have the slightly younger Aaron Rodgers over Tom Brady. I don't, know, I don't know what that's going to take. That might be not realistic. I don't know. I don't think the Raiders are going to draft a quarterback. I feel like at least not with a early round pick. I feel like with the with the guys that they just paid, like, like Devontae Adams and Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro and Max Crosby and among others, and probably have to either franchise tag or pay Josh Jacobs, my guess is that kind of in a try to win now mode. They get a, a rookie quarterback, I mean. It might just be starting over, starting from scratch. I mean, maybe they go with like Jared Stidham for a year or two and see what happens. Jimmy G's out there as well. Might be serviceable enough, especially if the Raiders improve that defense.
Let's all star Mike Trout Refractor. And a purple Julio Rodriguez, nice. Love the shades. Love the love the old Mariners colors there. That's A. L. West Robert Flores. And another autograph. Jesus Sanchez for the fish. N. L. East. Steve with that one. We'll do a little recap at the end of this break, too. We've got a Seiya Suzuki Purple, Bobby Witt Jr., flipping a ball to a kid, maybe, an autograph baseball. Jake Odorizzi right here as well. Oh, Jake Carr's a little slippery. All right, next box. Oh, we got some playoff football upon us, ladies and gentlemen. Saturday games. I will not see you on Friday and Saturday. That's my weekend. Jason Jasky will be here taking care of you, watching some Saturday games with you as well. But Seattle at San Francisco. Seattle at San Francisco. Who does everyone have there? According to uh, ESPN Analytics, San Francisco, they're, they're projecting a 77.3 win percentage for San Francisco. But the Seahawks plus 10. Is that intriguing? It's a low total, only 42 points. A lot of points for a low total. Devin saying Seattle in the upset, but I'm a homer. Well, I wonder if the pressure gets to Brock Purdy's been playing well, but if the pressure gets to him, that playoff pressure gets to him. It's a different, different beast. And if uh, Devin plays a little above and beyond, or if uh, Devin Seahawks plays a little above and beyond, it'll be interesting. Also, the Seahawks lost to the Niners in mid-December, last time they met. Now, sometimes, you know, in the NFL, it's kind of hard to beat a team twice in a row. Two meetings in the same season. So does that work to the Seahawks' advantage? And it wasn't like the Seahawks were blown out, too. Niners won 21-13. Got a Torkelson, purple, rookie. AL Central, Devin.
Got a Stephen Kwan, rookie refractor, 41 out of 299. He had a real nice season last year. AL Central, Devin. I mean, if Julio Rodriguez didn't exist, you know, Stephen Kwan might have gotten some more Rookie of the Year votes. What about the uh, the the late the night game on Saturday? Only two games on Saturday is Chargers at Jaguars. That should be a good matchup. Who does everyone have there? Chargers looking like they're not uh, they're, they're they're getting healthier, but it looks like they're not going to have Mike Williams. I don't think he's practiced all week. Which is usually not a good sign. He's still listed as questionable, but... Jaguars are the uh, slight home dogs at plus one and a half. Totals 47 and a half. Jaguars playing some great football. Now they're starting. Things are really clicking on all cylinders for them. Won their last five games. They beat Tennessee, thirty-six to twenty-two. They beat Dallas in overtime, forty to thirty-four. Beat the Jets, nineteen to three. Beat the Texans, thirty-one to three. And then in what amounts to be what amounts to a playoff game. In the last week of the season, they beat the Titans. Must win for both of those teams, too. Win and in. And they beat the Titans again, 20-16. to 16. Eric saying Niners beat them twice. Go Niners. Three times. I mean, that's even harder, right? Three times? Yeah, and the Chargers... We're playing well too. They beat Miami twenty three to seventeen, beat Tennessee seventeen to fourteen, beat the Colts twenty to three, beat the Rams thirty one to ten, but then stumbled against Denver and lost that game. Now if all things are seemingly equalish for these teams, right? Devin gives the Jaguars the edge just based on the coaching staff. Yeah, Doug Peterson, what a great job. I think the Jaguars started the season three and seven. Something like that. Three or four wins to start this, you know, whatever X amount of the season. And at that record, there should be no way you get to the playoffs. But they battled. They did. They turned things around. Cut down on some turnovers. You know, some of those one-score losses turned into, turned into wins. No, what, what Jason Jaspi, what's up? What's the what's the crazy stat on the Niners? I like stats, give it to me. But I might I might do Jags like money line or something like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think about these picks, but that's I'm I'm sort of considering Ravens. Oh, I'm sorry, the Seahawks plus ten. Considering Jag's money line. Here's Bobby Wood Jr., AL Central. Devin.
And we got an autograph, Connor Pilkington. AL Central. Cleveland, this is for you. Devin with the AL Central. Wow, interesting. Hmm. Jason Jaspi saying the Niners may have only beat two teams. With a winning record this season? That's kind of crazy to think about. Looking at their schedule, they, they beat the Seahawks earlier in the season. Well, they ended up with a winning record, right? Rams don't have a winning record. Carolina doesn't have a winning record. These are the wins. Rams, again, they don't have a winning, didn't have a winning record. Chargers had a winning record, but Cardinals, not a winning record. A win against the Saints, not a winning record. Miami had a winning record. Tampa Bay had a winning record. Seattle had a winning or a winning record. Commanders no, Vegas no, Cardinals no. It's like four, yeah. Seahawks twice. They beat the Chargers and the Dolphins and the Buccaneers, I guess. Buccaneers ended up with a winning record, right? But yeah, it's. Oh, Bucks didn't. Oh, NFC South. So only four of their 13 wins against teams with a winning record. I wonder, I wonder if there's like a follow-up stat that says like, and now what happens to those teams in the playoffs? I need like, I need some, some, uh, some AI where I can just punch in the question. Teams with at least double digit wins With more than half of those wins against losing teams, how they do in the first round, in the wild card round of the playoffs. Right, yeah, that's a good point. You know, people are talking about, hey, what do the Eagles do? Who, who do they play? You know, who are they beating? You know, sure, when you beat the Lions 38 to 35 at the beginning of the season, you're like, sure, it's the Lions, right? But then you look back, Lions had a pretty decent season, right? They beat Detroit. They had a solid season. Minnesota won the division. Jacksonville's a playoff team. Dallas won a lot of games. Pittsburgh almost slipped into the playoffs. Giants are in the playoffs. Now I'm curious. There has to be numbers like that somewhere. Someone had to have done that research. What, you know, what team ended up having the the hardest strength of schedule based on win percentage, and if they make it to the playoffs, how well do those teams do in the playoffs?
just stretched out stretched out my hand before this. Oh, and a Danny Young. Rookie Orange Auto for the AL West Robert Flores. Last spot mojo coming in handy here. Going strong. 7 out of 25. Yeah, I guess it would be the AFC teams that would end up having the hardest schedule. Yeah, there you go, Logan. First time to the Packers didn't let you down this year. Earlier break with the downtown Rogers. So I'm leading. I'm leading Jags in that game. What else? What about what about Sunday matchups? What are, what 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 matchups are you looking forward to on Sunday? Especially if you're a neutral fan. Miami at Buffalo. New York at Minnesota. Ravens at Cincinnati. If Tua was playing, that that matchup might might have been a little more interesting. Giants at Minnesota could be a lot better game than, than people might think. Wish Lamar Jackson was playing. That would have been uh, that would have been interesting. All right, if I'm forcing myself to pick a side, though, I'm not sure if I'm I laying minus 13 and a half with the Bills. Dolphins almost getting two touchdowns is interesting, though. Especially with a low total, 43 and a half. Logan got Jags all the way. That would make Trevor Lawrence owners very happy. Right, they, they've got some investments in Trevor Lawrence rookie cards. That'd be hashtag good for the hobby. Devin has got some info for us. Devin is a Seahawks guy. Niners are 27 in the past D the last three weeks. Gave up 270 and three TDs to Wentz and Heineke. 365 and three to Stidham. And then went against David Bluff, who got them on a 77 yard TD. Interesting. So there's some leaks there. I'm, I'm definitely thinking, I'm definitely leaning uh, Seahawks plus 10. I think betting-wise, if you're into that sort of thing, I feel like uh, I feel like the Niners, and they're heavy favorites like that, tend not to cover. I don't know. I'll have, have to look at the ATS numbers, yeah, against the spread numbers, but something to look into. Vikings lose by 40. Logan's a Packers guy, of course. He doesn't want to see the Vikings move on at all. There's Spencer Torkelson, AL Central, Devin. I'm 
I'm inclined to lean Giants. I don't think they're going to win by 40, but... There's Kevin Smith, rookie auto for the A's. AL West, Robert. Rookie auto, nice. Another Bobby Witt Jr. box. Yeah. What about Ravens Bengals? And I wish wish the, had some teams healthier matchups here. Although Ravens could the Ravens surprise? I don't know if they're gonna win, but they're at plus nine and a half. The total's only forty and a half. Although I guess the Ravens and Bengals did meet each other in the last week of the season. Bengals beat them 27-16. And they beat them twice in a row. Defense is still strong, though. If they, they can, if they can slow down the game, if they can grind on that game, then it could get pretty interesting. Yeah. So who are they putting out there at, at quarterback? Is, is do they have a healthy quarterback? Tyler Huntley has like a shoulder issue, maybe. <laughs> Logan J Dog, who is a uh, Vikings guy, wondering if the Packers play on Saturday or Sunday. All right, another box. Got a Bobby Wood Jr. purple. AL Central, Devin. And a Bryson Stott rookie autograph. Nice. NL East. Steve. Steve K with that.
right, another box coming up. We got one more matchup this weekend. We've got Dallas at Tampa Bay. I'm leaning Tampa Bay a little bit here. Plus two and a half. Is that crazy? Saw some weird stat. Not a weird stat. I think I saw some stat about about um. The Cowboys in outdoor games in playoffs? Something like someone looked that up. I don't think that record is very good. It's either the record or like I don't know, like scoring is down significantly, the number of sacks they get is down significantly on average in outdoor arenas versus indoor arenas. Yeah, J-Dogs likes Tampa as well. I can't bet against Tom Brady. engineer like some sort of last minute drive Dallas might go up big early take the foot off the gas a little bit you know untimely turnover here and there tipped pass interception A nice purple Julio Rodriguez and a Spencer Torkelson, AL Central, Devin. The Julio Rodriguez, rookie debut, AL West, Robert. And a William Woods to 99. Braves, AL East, Joe. Check that, NL East, Steven. Jeremy Pena, AL West, Robert. All right, another box.
What's everyone's uh, way too early picks for the uh, for the Super Bowl? Got any way too early picks? What network has a Super Bowl this year? Bengals Seahawks. Bengals Seahawks. That'd be that'd be quite a Super Bowl. Fox has a Super Bowl this year. I don't think that's a matchup Fox wants. Vikings Bills. I think Fox would want the Bills in the Super Bowl. I don't know, I don't know if is Minnesota getting them the ratings. Right, that's a Chad Daw matchup. Bengals Seahawks. And who who wins the Super Bowl, Chad? In that scenario. There's Bobby Wood Jr. It's Wander Franco. And it's Royce Lewis rookie card to 250 Aqua Parallel. It's for the AL Central, Devin. Our Bengals win 82 to 79. It's like a college basketball, a high scoring college basketball game. And 10 TDs from Burrow. Wow. You'd rather see Burrow win than your Seahawks? In the Super Bowl? Just because you've got that Joe Burrow RPA? Money over everything. I mean, if Joe Burrow threw for 10 touchdowns in a Super Bowl game, I mean... How much, how much do you think that card goes up by? Another 40, 50% maybe? 10 touchdowns? That would just be ridiculous. Now, that, now that's what Fox would want. The network, Fox is broadcasting the Super Bowl this year. If they end up with Bengals Seahawks, they want to see a 10 touchdown game. Mark, what's going on? Buffalo, San Francisco. Is that a matchup that Fox wants? Yeah, what if it's uh, what if it, if it's Bengals Eagles? Can you imagine the trash talk between Jason and Chad for two weeks? Mark saying Robert Kraft sent an email to Patriot season ticket holders stating that they will be looking at all facets of the organization to ensure a return to the playoffs. What does that mean? Of course, I mean, of course he's going to say that. NFC, I think, is going to be a tough matchup. I feel like the NFC, it's, I don't 
don't know. There's, there seems to. I feel like there's a slightly easier path for the Eagles. Who's a threat to the Eagles? I don't know if Jason Jackson is still listening, but who are the Eagles scared of in the NFC? Is there a team they're scared of? See? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, the only thing they'd be scared of is is just injuries to their own team. But are they scared of any other teams? Yeah. I mean, don't self inflicted mistakes during a game. That I mean, they could. I feel like if they lose in the playoffs, it's not because the other team won. You know what I mean? Like because they lost, kind of thing. Cowboys, maybe. Brock Purdy? I don't know if they, are they that scared about Brock Purdy? Maybe. Juan Yepes, rookie auto, checkerboard parallel. That's for the NL Central, Robert Flores. And a 125. 108 out of 125. Devin saying the Seahawks and the Eagles have a history of getting blown out in prime time. Oh, blown out by them, by what? By the Cowboys in prime time? Or just in general? Is it a bird team thing? Yeah, the rest of that team is pretty scary. Brock Purdy doesn't really have to do too much, huh? with their defense and their weapons. Last box. Yeah, who makes the low seed run? Because there's always, you know, there's always a Cinderella story. I mean, could you argue that, that maybe the Bengals were that Cinderella story last year? I don't think a lot of people at the beginning of the playoffs anyway. I don't know if a lot of people expected the Bengals to go as far as they did. What do you think the spread would be? AFC, any AFC playoff team versus the Eagles.
I'm just saying if it was just any AFC team. Any AFC playoff team. If there was a line in Vegas right now that said any AFC team versus Eagles. Would any AFC team be like minus two and a half maybe? I don't think it'd be a very big spread. Would it be Eagles minus one? And we got a blue Zach Ranke, a little color match. Royals, 90 out of 199. That's going to be for the AL Central. Devin. And a Julio Rodriguez. Chiefs Eagles, that would be a matchup. Andy Reid versus his old team. Mahomes Jalen Hurts matchup. Ooh. That Eagles defense chasing around um chasing down uh Jalen Hurts or uh, Patrick Mahomes that is. Got a Bobby Wood Jr. for the AL Central. Devin, we got a Seiya Suzuki. NL Central, Robert Purple. And the last little stack here. Corey Seager Purple, George Kirby Purple, and Orion Pepio Purple. And there you go, boys and girls. Full case break of Topps Chrome Baseball Update Edition in the books Thanks, everybody, for watching, for breaking with us, for getting in on this break. Appreciate everyone making this happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. Got the George Kirby. Some nice stuff in here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye-bye.